There is no one better the country to put in context what we've been discussing today, and also no one better in the country to remind us that we have jobs and we have responsibilities. And the latter, at certain times, must override the former. So Dale, great pleasure to be here. Because after 30 years of running up and down stairs in power plants, my knees don't work all as good as they should. This up and give you the big picture. And uh, hold on to a second. I will say this: I have not prepared any detailed presentation, and I didn't figure that I needed to because I knew Dan had to. Is mind wrapped completely around and nor with the facts and figures about San Onofre. Uh, I was given the, ple the, ple the pleasure, I don't know, the pleasure, the opportunity. Uh, Dan asked me to review the report before it was issued to the NRC, which I did. And uh, I can only say I am incredibly impressed with the amount of work that these guys did the incredible um, amount of data that uh, Dora went through, Dan went through, and how they get their, uh, <coughs> their facts straight and present it very clearly as, as he's done here. I've known Dan for, what, maybe almost 40 years. And uh, <coughs> starting from in 1976 when I left GE. And Dan has just kept on consistently going after this very serious problem that we face in this country and in the world. And I can only say that I appreciate the fact that there are people like Dan who are out there continuing to do this kind of work. Uh, I, have re I had retired about seven or eight years ago and figured I wasn't going to have to do anything more. And then Fukushima came along. Uh, when Fukushima came along, all of a sudden the phone started ringing and my name apparently had drifted to the top of the, of the pile because of the work that I had done back in 1976 and later years uh, <coughs> with Mark I containment, as uh, Dad has, has spoken. Uh, the, the thing that I would guess I wanted to talk about mostly is this issue of the regulatory problems? How do you how do you how do you get the uh, regulatory authorities to do the real job that they are supposed to do? I hate to just say talk about negative things, but there there are not a whole lot of positive things to talk about. So uh, I guess that's an apology, but that's the way it is. Uh, back uh, when I first started in the nuclear business a long time ago, about uh, 50 years ago or so, uh, the, in the United States, the nuclear uh, programs were regulated by what was called at that time the Atomic Energy Commission. The Atomic Energy Commission had two jobs. One was to regulate safety and the other one was to promote the use of nuclear power. Uh, you, you, you laugh, and of course, that, that's, that's the usual reaction, because you know, how can you do both of these independently without, a lot of, without, without bias one, one way or the other? Now, when I was uh, about in, let's see, I think it was about in 1970, 72, something like that, uh, it became obvious that this was a problem. That, and uh, so the, the uh, U.S. government decided that uh, they were going to separate regulation from promotion. So they left the Atomic Energy Commission uh, as it existed, more or less, and they split off the regulatory authority into the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The problem was, of course, they didn't change any people, they just moved people, people's uh, titles and, and reporting uh, 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 chains of command. Now, when I was working at GE, 
I had, uh, I'll say, the opportunity. I really enjoyed my work. And uh, I did quite a bit of work with the Japanese utilities. Uh, I did some work on Fukushima. I did some work on Saruga in Japan and a couple of other plants. And in the early days back then, in about 1970, the uh, Japanese regulatory authority was uh, fell under the auspices of an organization called MITI, M-I-T-I, and I don't re remember what it stood for, but it was sort of like the NRC. And then it devolved into NISA, the Nuclear Safety Agency, and now just this year, they have made another change. They have now split the regulatory authority in Japan off to another organization. But the problem, I'm sure, is going to be just like we had in this country, and that is you got the same damn people doing the same thing. And uh, <clears throat> it doesn't really change the way they do the work. It doesn't change their mindsets. I, uh, as Dan indicated, I left GE back in 1976 because at that time I had been given a special assignment which was to manage the re-evaluation of the Mark I containment, uh, containment designs. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on it, but the problem was the system had not been designed to withstand the accident that it was supposed to contain. And we had some 16 plants already in operation in the United States, another 10 or so around the world uh, when we became aware of that problem. Well, what would you do if you knew that you had, as Dan used the metaphor, you got the car without brakes going down the road, you, you either really slow down or you stop it. Well, of course, in the nuclear world, you don't do that. If you if you acknowledge that you have a serious safety problem, you run the risk of shutting the whole industry down and ruining your business opportunities. So, of course, the pressure was on to keep things running while we did about a five-year analytical program to determine whether they were safe, weren't safe, were safe enough, needed to be modified, or what. And I'm going to just give you one little uh, story that I remember uh, about uh, the 1st of January in 1976 I had arranged to go to a review meeting with the Nuclear Re Regulatory Commission back in Washington DC and you know how most of the government meetings are you have this this uh, rule that you know everything has to be done with transparency, you know the Sunshine Act and so on. Well, when we showed up in Washington, we of course went out to dinner with the NRC the night before. We went back to their offices. We told the NRC people that we had some serious problems and that uh, we needed to really seriously think about what to do with these plants that were in operation. In, re in, uh, in reply, we got from the, the main guy at NRC, who was responsible for reviewing this stuff, he gave us a, a one-hour chalk talk on the blackboard explaining to us why this could not be a problem. <laughs> right? This was the regulatory uh, authority. So that gives you a feeling for the, for the mindset. Okay, now, uh, the uh, <coughs> thing that I would just say about Fukushima, I have a few facts. I, I googled uh, the Fukushima recovery plan this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I've been following it pretty closely for about a year, but things, you know, the flow of information has sort of slowed down now. They're in the middle, you know, they're, they're slogging around along trying to figure out what to do with the thing. But uh, there are some interesting things I can tell you about Fukushima. Uh, <clears throat> Fukushima Daiichi plant consists of six units, all of them, all of them uh, in Mark I containments. TEPCO, the operator of the plant, has decided that they're not going to attempt 
to uh, return any of those plants to service. They can't, of course, because they're melted down. But but they are. They have decided that they're going to terminate operation of all six of those plants. Two of them perhaps could have could have been put back in service. They have another plant, Daini, which has got four more units, and they're considering not starting those up either. The uh, I, I just want to give you some numbers here. The in ten years of last year, a start should be made with the retrieval of melted fuel of the reactors. Okay, they're going to start to remove the melted fuel in 10 years. But before they do that, they have to repair the containments on all of those plants because there's so much radioactivity and so much stuff that they've got to deal with. They've got to make sure that the containment will in fact contain the cleanup operation. So. <laughs> And then, uh, then uh, decommissioning would take more than 30 years because the pressure vessels of the reactor vessels are damaged and filled with melted fuel and so on. And then they go on to say that uh, the overall cleanup program would take 30 years, perhaps, if they if they did their if they did their uh, cost estimates properly, and it's going to cost them in the neighborhood of four, uh, 405 billion Jeez. yen. Okay, if you don't know what a yen is, it takes about 80 of them to make a dollar. So they're talking about 50, 50 to 60 billion dollars to just clean up the mess. Well, PG&E built Diablo, Diablo Canyon for about five, five billion apiece. So what that really says is it would, to clean up the mess of Fukushima, will cost what it took to build uh, two or three Diablo Canyons. So uh, the bottom line is that nuclear power, as uh, Dan says, as David Brower said, it's a good way to find an earthquake fault. It's also a very expensive way to boil water. Uh, it is a, a, a very demanding and very difficult technology because just one little mistake can really, uh, as they say, one nuclear bomb can ruin your whole day. So. Uh, that's about the uh, extent of my comments. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have, if you have anything. I guess I should say this. There are no Mark I containments in the state of California, so you don't have to worry about them here. There are no boiling water reactors west of Iowa, so uh, there are no BWR containments that you have to worry about. Well, that's that's not quite right. There's one in Washington State, but um, <clears throat> but uh, I think the thing that we need to worry about here is as also we need to take a look at the Admiral Canyon from a seismic standpoint. So, with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. The containment very well. It means I guess it's very obvious. It means a maybe it's not possible. Yeah. or is going to be extremely expensive. Now, I, I've read recently uh, there's been some uh, renewed discussion in Japan about the use of a, of a sarcophagus approach to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Fukushima. Now that, for those of you who have followed uh, <coughs> the uh, Chernobyl accident, you know that that's what they did there. They, they, they basically buried it in concrete and lead and <clears throat> did not attempt to clean it up. And so there is a possibility that they may have to go that way in, in, in Japan at, at Fukushima. There, I get a report about every two weeks from, uh, from Japan and you know, 